So, you're after a nice, crispy looking red cape? Well, it's a good job you're on. One tip does plenty. To start off with, we're going to be dry brushing on our Zenithal highlight. Now, I'm going to be using flat white from Army Painter, but you use whatever white paint works best for you. I'm going to be using a little bit of MDF to get the paint off of the brush so that we've just got enough paint on it for dry brushing. Now, the reason I'm using MDF is because it doesn't absorb all my paint like a sponge or bit of tissue does, and you can get the same effect from using cardboard. You can get off just enough and leave the right amount of moisture on your brush. So now I'm just going to get on what I like to call my colour filter and for that I'm going to be using the contrast paint Blood Angels Red. The reason I'm doing that is it means that once I've finished painting this, if there is any areas that I have missed, they are going to get filled up by the contrast paint because it likes to see all those areas get right into the recess points. Also where my Xenophil highlight is, it is now pretty much going to be colour by numbers and stay in between the lines because this is now going to show me exactly where my highlights need to go for when I go to put them on the cape for this next section coming right up. Once we've allowed enough time for the contrast paint to dry, now we can come on with our proper base layer. And for that, I'm going to be using Word Bearer Red. Yeah, you may have guessed it if you've uh, watched this channel a few times before. Uh, of course, my three favorite reds, this is my favorite base layer. So as I was just saying before, what you need to do is just follow those highlights that we've got underneath from the Zenithal highlighting and just color them in. If there's no white paint on the filter layer, don't color it with our word bearer. Leave it blank for now. We will be getting to it in a bit. Now we're going to be moving on to our mid-tone and once again we're going to be continuing to paint in between the lines. As you can see there's a good colour distinction between each layer. That's absolutely fine, we're going to deal with that in the next moment. But for now just continue to paint in between those lines but try not to fill them up completely and leave some of that word bearer red in the background. For this next stage you want to make sure that you are using a relatively large size brush. I would suggest a size 4 to size 6. You can go bigger if you want, but you know, that's on you. So we want it absolutely soaking wet, drop a little bit of water off, you can see the consistency of what I'm using there. Put it into your word bearer red, so you're going to go back down a step in your paint tones and then cover it all over the model. What that is going to do is that is going to tie in those last two layers and it's going to make it look a lot nicer congratulations you've accidentally just been taught how to glaze now we're going to do a similar thing again but you want to use a bit less water this time and we're going to be using Mephiston red and we're going to be going over those top areas so we're starting to add our final highlights congratulations you've just done a little bit more glazing now we're going to be adding our last layer, our top highlight of Wild Rider Red. And for that, we're going to be going back to our first technique, which we did with the Zenithal highlight. We're going to be dry brushing this on and getting those edges. That's all we're going to be doing, going around the base of the cape, down those top parts of the folds, and anywhere that you feel needs to have a top light. And there we are. Congratulations once again, third time lucky. We are now running on some pretty awesome looking red capes guys i really hope you've enjoyed yet another one tip does plenty this one's gone a little bit longer than my last ones but i'm trying to keep them as short and information packed as possible anyway guys i'll catch you in the next one